the reason why we say black is magic is because blackness is everything. What's up, y'all? This is Brandon. I'm a son to a Puerto Rican mother, son to a black father. Hi, my name is Alicia Maria Gamonte. I am a product of a African-American woman and a first-generation Dominican-American man. I am Andrea del Carmen Vasquez. My mom's from Ecuador, Guayaquil, and my dad is from Colima, Mexico. So a lot of the conversations that I've been having is talking about what is Afro-Latinidad and what does it mean to be a Black Latino? That's such an interesting term, Afro-Latina. It's interesting. I never really identified with the term Afro-Latino. Every time I thought about Afro-Latinos, I, I thought about the Caribbean, right? And although my mom is from Ecuador and there are like Caribbean tendencies, it still wasn't like the right fit. What I am is a blend because I truly do hold true the fact that I'm black from my mom's side, Dominican from my dad's side, and that to me is my Afro-Latina side. I'm of that diaspora, and I'm also Latino. I think that was a big shift for me calling myself a black Latina. The reason why I like using blackness, it's because some of us like just physically can't escape the process of being racialized as black. There's just not one way of being black. There's multiple ways of being black, the same way there's multiple ways of being Latino. I love cumbias, and cumbias is a black people music. You know, the marimba, right? And it comes from like these very like African rhythms. Every time I listen to a cumbia, and you're like going around, and there's like cumbias, and they're like, hey, what's up? Those are the moments where I'm like, what's up, Black Joy? This is Black Joy too, <laughs> right? So like my Thanksgivings would be like a bedney with like arroz con gandules, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, yams, right? So it was kind of like a connect, it was it was a little bit of both. I've always been black and Puerto Rican. Like those two, those two things are not separate for me. But once I came to California, they felt like two very different things. Like I had to be one or the other. If I try to go eat at a, at a Mexican restaurant, I feel very black. I went to school and I met a girl who everybody said, you should know, she's Dominican too. And I was like, oh, what? She's Dominican? I go up to her and I'm like, hey, people say we should meet. I'm Dominican, you're Dominican. Like I wanna go, I wanna know so much about you. And she stops me and she says, you're not Dominican. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, you, you, don't, you don't know me. And she's like, no, you're not Dominican. You don't look Dominican. Maybe you're Haitian. Um, and she literally walks away from me. I'm 13 years old at this point. A lot of my Afro-Latinidad and Blackness and all of that is tied to my hair. Growing up, I didn't know what to do with it. So I was very embarrassed by it because it was so frizzy. It was right after my perm that I realized that it was very damaging to my hair. I guess the question was like, why am I damaging my hair when I know that so much of my hair is tied to my own like black identity? Am I trying to get rid of it? Am I like, am I embarrassed by it? We as people need to start figuring out when are those moments where we're like, right? And then we are like, okay, that was it. That was me being anti-black. All right, not take it out. <laughs> It's uncomfortable conversations, it's uncomfortable actions, but it's all so that we can live in a world where we truly believe in equality. Like this idea of shared risk of like, what are you willing to give as a non-black person? What are you willing to give up for the well-being of everyone? That's a tough conversation for folks, right? Because some of us are giving up a lot. I think that it's really important more than ever to see big brands really coming behind voices of color. I mean, Target is doing some really great partnerships right now because brands and advocates have power. And so passing off that megaphone to us has been the most satisfying aspect of this time. And it's about time, right? <laughs> I just think about how much I wanted to learn about my identity, right? And how much, you know, how many questions I had. And I was scared to ask them at, at times. And if I could go back in time, I would just be like, girl, just go ask. I just want to say thank you, mom, for steering me away from hating myself. I could never hate myself because I am a part of you. Um, and to my dad, thank you 
thank you for making it cool to be black um, from a very early age. Thank you for loving both sides of yourself um, so that I can love my both sides of myself. I'm a father to a black Puerto Rican Thai and Mexican baby boy. I'm definitely trying to like, curate his experience so that he doesn't grow up having to compartmentalize his culture. He can kind of come up, hopefully with my example, just understanding that all four of those things is what he is. He doesn't have to be Mexican in one space and Puerto Rican in another. He doesn't have to be black in one space and Thai in another, right? He can be all of those things in any space because that's ultimately what makes him who he is and what makes him beautiful.